Doctor Who Series 11 was an absolutely terrible sci-fi show. Now, I recognize that this is a bold claim, but I think I have more than enough evidence to support this statement. My main problem with the sci-fi this season is that it had the most boring, stagnant, unimaginative elements I've seen in a long time. But before I get into it, make sure to drop a like below to let me know you want to see more Doctor Who content on this channel. Okay, what's so unimaginative about the sci-fi this season? Well, let me just start by describing the monsters from a few of the episodes. I'm sure that will clear all of this up. The first episode was all about an alien from a race of adept assassins. They send their kind to different planets all throughout the galaxy, tasked with tracking down and killing a particular member of a race native to that planet. They live for the hunt, revel in the glory of securing the kill, and adorn themselves with small totems of each of their prey. Not to mention, they wear a futuristic mask that hides their scary face, only to be revealed as a shock once the story gets exciting. Huh? Tim Shaw? Who's that? I was talking about The Predator. You know, the movie that came out over 30 years ago? No, I clearly wasn't talking about Tim Shaw, member of the race of, um... What was his race called again? Or his planet? Despite being a complete ripoff of something legitimately cool, Tim Shaw was so boring that I don't remember anything about him. But alright, maybe he was just a fluke. What about Demons of the Punjab? Yeah, that was unique, wasn't it? The Doctor and company are dropped into a historic moment in British history, filled with human conflict, only to discover that something is off. People are dying, and it seems like these strange and confusing aliens are popping up right when they pass away. What's worse, the Doctor has no idea what they're doing here at this particular point in time, or why they could possibly want to kill humans who have seemingly nothing to do with them. It's only after the Doctor uses a little genius intellect to break into the alien ship and have a discussion that it's revealed that the group of otherworldly visitors is actually peaceful. Yeah, they weren't killing anyone, but instead they simply wanted to be around when the people died as an act of altruism. Isn't that sweet? Oh, you thought I was talking about the Thagerians? No, no, no. I'm obviously describing testimony. You know, from Twice Upon a Time. That's weird. These stories are just so gosh darn similar. Almost as if one of them had copied the other one. But pfft, no, I'm sure that's not it. Let's move on. I'm sure there's plenty of other original and creative content in Series 11, right? I mean, what about the Saranga Conundrum? Sure, the Doctor has been trapped on board an enclosed spaceship with a scary monster dozens of times before, but at least this monster is completely unique, right? A short, green, slimy-looking creature whose primary ability is to eat things in incredibly large quantities? No one's ever thought of that before. Unless you've heard of the alien Upchuck from Ben 10. Huh. They really share quite the similarities in appearance, don't they? And they also have the exact same abilities. Weird. Well, what about the Witchfinders? That one was certainly original. The Doctor traveled back to the past, to a time where superstition ran rampant, and the belief of something magical like a witch was commonplace. Then, as it seems like witches might actually exist, it turns out that they're simply a race of female aliens that just look creepy and have abilities that can be mistaken for magical witch powers. Yeah, yeah, the show did this back in season three, and it was way better, with a much cooler dynamic of the witches battling William Shakespeare using the power of words. Series 11 is just full of rip-offs, plain and simple. Any remotely good idea from this series was just stolen from an objectively better piece of sci-fi media, and it's a shame. Not only is it indicative of the writer's laziness, but it's just kind of scummy. Sure, there's the possibility that these ideas were stumbled upon organically, but four coincidences in one season? I can only give so much benefit of the doubt before I recognize a pattern. But these aren't the only episodes in the series. Maybe the others have some cool sci-fi. Well, unfortunately not. Everything that wasn't a ripoff was really lazy, uninteresting, or just nonsensical. There were two genuinely good and unique ideas, but they were both wasted. First, let's go over the lazy elements. I'll do a quick rundown of all the monsters that were so milk toast that they don't deserve any more analysis. 
Episode 2, Robots and Angry Bedsheets. This was lame, it wasn't scary, and it offered nothing new. Episode 3, Angry Racist Time Traveler. He's just a guy, with no motivation and no powers. Episode 4, Big Spiders. That's it, they're just big. I mean, come on, this concept was done better in the 70s. Seriously, go watch Planet of the Spiders. At least those ones had psychic powers. Episode 7, More Robots. Nothing to say here, just more robots. All of these are boring, bottom-of-the-barrel sci-fi. Completely creatively bankrupt. They didn't even try. So what about the two good ideas I said they had? Well, unfortunately for us, the Solitract and the Ux were both executed horribly. The Solitract, a sentient universe incompatible with our own, is an absolutely fabulous idea. But it was squandered in such a boring and forgetful way that it almost hurts to talk about. So much potential flushed down the drain by writers too incompetent to realize the opportunity they held in their hands. Instead of an episode exploring the possibilities of a world that thinks for itself, we're dragged along on this wild goose chase through a forest, then a house. Maybe there's a monster, there's a little blind girl, an absentee father, a mirror portal, some weird cave hallway, the creepy gremlin that lives in the cave hallway. You see how much unnecessary crap is shoved into this episode before we get the big reveal about the Solitract? It's not good. With an idea that cool and so many different possibilities for storytelling, you shouldn't just shove it at the end of a mystery where it has no time to breathe after being revealed. Yes, watching the doctor talk to an omnipotent frog on a chair was the exact sort of thing I tune into Doctor Who for, but I don't want a consolation prize. I'm not going to be happy you wasted such an amazing idea just because I got to see two minutes of it in an hour-long episode. This show has the budget, it has the time, but for some reason we were forced to drag our feet through a confusing and unentertaining mystery instead of indulging in an exciting and bountiful sci-fi world. But I can't talk much more about the Solitract without getting legitimately angry, so let's move on to the Ux. The Ux make absolutely no sense. There's only two of them at a time? How does that work, you know, biologically? They live for thousands of years, but one is clearly much older than the other. She trained him in his abilities like a mother, so I doubt that they mate. Where do new Ux come from? Also, why are these two alone on a completely barren planet? How do they survive there? And if they're really powerful enough to terraform entire worlds, and people across the universe know about them, how come no one else in the universe has ever tried to take advantage of their abilities like Tim Shaw did? If any of these questions were answered, then maybe they could have actually been interesting. Instead, we just got telepaths that live really long. That's not particularly cool, I hate to break it to you. Especially not for a series finale. Other Doctor Who finales have ridiculous nonsense like multiverse invasions, paradox machines and armies from the future, rebooting the entire universe, or standing at the end of time on the ruins of Gallifrey. Oh no, the Blue Man group stole four planets and is going to blow them up. Remember when Davros stole 27 planets and was going to harness their gravitational energy to destroy all matter in every conceivable reality? Like, this is just so boring. Basic, cookie-cutter sci-fi. It's embarrassing to know that the Ux and the Pating come from the same series that gave us the Vashta Narada, Weeping Angels, Silence, the Mummy on the Orient Express, or Satan himself. Doctor Who Series 11 was creatively bankrupt, even if all the other issues still remained. The Doctor was a hypocrite, the characters were boring, the political themes were poorly written. Even if all those problems were still around, the show would still be worth watching if it showed us some cool new sci-fi. A genuinely scary monster, a cosmic being that makes you reconsider your place in the universe. Hell, I'd be satisfied if they just showed me something that looked cool. There's this awesome fan-made video on YouTube titled Rain, which I'm going to link right here. It's just the doctor showing his companion something creative and otherworldly and only lasts for like a minute. But that's all you need for a satisfying sci-fi experience. That's it. 
But for whatever reason, Doctor Who Series 11 never even came close to this. No new ideas. Nothing unique or cool. It's a real shame. But the thing is, a whole bunch of people like to blame the bad sci-fi in this series on Chris Chibnall's decision not to include monsters from Doctor Who's history. I don't think that's the issue at all. No, even the New Year's special, Resolution, had really boring sci-fi, despite the fact that it had a Dalek in it. You want to see a well-written story about a single Dalek terrorizing the Doctor? Go watch Series 1, Episode 6. You want to see a Dalek possess people, or be confronted with the idea of having a Dalek control your mind? Check out Series 7, Episode 1. There's nothing original or good here, even when given the springboard of over 50 years of complex and intriguing Doctor Who lore. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough about this. Let me know what's your favorite monster through all of Doctor Who history. Tell me down in those comments. Make sure to subscribe, ring that bell, and remember, always stay frosty.